this a Bible? Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. Today, I'm going to be taught the Word of God with understanding and with clarity. Because today will be a life-changing experience for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Yay. You know, that song just, woo boy. But there's just so much. I owe God. I owe God so much. Because if I look back where I started from, I realized the enemy was trying to take me out. But it took God grace, his mercy, his love, his me being obedient to him, and he still wrapped his hands, his arms around me. Yes, sir. And what made it so powerful, he still said, you still my son. Yes, sir. So see, that song just touches me. And I believe every day God wants us to experience that touching, that touching atmosphere. You know, it's it just like the woman who had the issue of blood. She said, you know, she said, forget these protocols. Forget what Sister Jones talking about. Forget what he talking about. Forget what they say on my ball. I got to go and touch the hem of his garment because there's something tangible that I need to hear from him. Because yes, we all, you know, it just ain't by accident that we're going to get up 8.30 in the morning, come here to, you know, Pastor Robert, Elder Walker, or me. There's, there's a purpose and a reason. Because I believe each morning is a new day. And when it's a new day, God got a new word. So in order for me to get that new word, I got to be in the right position, in the right place, and on the right side just to hear. So let's go to Genesis chapter 28. Elder Walker going to do the reading from Genesis chapter 28 and 12. And if you want to make this a title, the title of this message is, God is getting me ready in this atmosphere for him. For him. It ain't, you know, um, it ain't for nobody else but him. Because, you know, people been putting their faith in the wrong person. Don't you know you put your faith in the wrong person? That person can hurt you. I hate to say it, you can put you put all your faith in your husband, your wife, your children. You know they can hurt you. And then you build a wall because they hurt you. But when I put all my confidence and my faith in God, there is no wall. There's nothing but comfort. Come on, read Genesis. Have you ever had a dream before? Have you ever had a dream, a vision? Have you ever, have you ever thought something that you know, man? I just want this thing to come. You know, I, I got so, I got so much high hopes for my children. I got so, I got so much high hopes for me. Oh, I got so much high hopes for when I graduate. Oh, I got so much. Oh, there's just so much I got, I got for me. Come on. And in the top of which we went to heaven. And later on, I'm going to show you, you know, how I got to get there. Come on. And, be, and behold, the angel of God is sinning, and it's sinning on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac, the land where on thy life, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. In other words, God said, I am the one who the forefather was trying to get to. In other words, everybody in here has a hope and a dream, but sometimes our hope and a dream can die when we put it in the wrong person's hand to try to fulfill a dream and the vision that God put in me. And if you read the people, God said, I was at the foot of the ladder all the time. He said, he said, I made this atmosphere 
conducive for you, but in order for this atmosphere to get conducive for you, there's going to be some qualifications, and there's really going to be some situations, some circumstances that the enemy is going to try to do to delay everything what I promised to you. Because he said, I got to get the atmosphere right for it. Because, you know, have you ever, you know, um, went to somebody's house and then, you know, things didn't feel right? Then, you know, just, you know, you just said, man, just something in here don't feel right. So that's how God feels when you're asking him to come into your prayer. He's but something in you don't feel right. There's something in you that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm coming, but there's something else you got to do to get this atmosphere conducive for miracles. Yeah. There's some qualifications that, you know, you're going to you're gonna have to do. Because all the time, we're always thinking that it's God supposed to do things, but God always said, no, wait for you. He said, I've done everything, but I need you to get something right. And the only way I can find out what's right, the Bible said, if I judge myself, there's no need for another man to judge me. So it lets me know that there's something in me that God wants me to take out. It's, it's not between my husband, not between my wife, it's not between my kids. It's just between me and God. Because I found out later on, Doing, 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 doing what I'm going through, that God is really, it ain't got nothing to do with my mama. It got nothing to do with the people on my job. It's got something to do with me and God trying to straighten me out. So it lets me know, in order for God to get this, get this atmosphere right for God, I got to be prepared. And when I get prepared, I got to be able to do some things. Go to Ephesians. Man, uh, in, in verse nine, now that he has sinned, oh, go to eight. Wherefore he said, when he that sinned up on high, see, he said, he said, now I, I'm going to tell you something. You know what I mean? He said, I'm going to write. I just want to talk to you right quick. Because, you know, have you ever gotten in the presence of God? God is saying, I just want to talk to you right quick. And then, and then people say, who are you talking to? Come on, come on. Come when, on. He, when therefore when he ascended up on high, mm -hmm. he led captain, captain, mm -hmm. and gave gift unto me. He said, that what had you, that what had you in chain, I got it off you. Uh -huh. Sometimes when God tried to separate other people from us, and we thinking that it's some, it got something to do with me. We go right back and go get it. All right. Child, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, girl. You know, I'm a Christian, and you know, I would never try to hurt your feelings. Yes, and God said, all the time I'm trying to tell you, they, they wasn't really connected with you. All right. Come on, what? Now that he descended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the Lord's Parts of the he earth. Said, I went to the to the worst of the worst to separate these people from you. I went places that you didn't want to go. Told you I got some. I got. I got. I got some. I got, I got some for you. But you know, a good parent would never let his children walk into the wilderness without them first going through the wilderness first. We say stuff like this. They got to learn like I learned. I tell people, why would you want somebody to go through what you want? You went through. You didn't like the feel. So why would you want somebody else to learn what you learned? See, that's what we say as Christians. We say stuff like that. Church folk. All right. Sit in the, in the, in the pew. Wave, wave your fan. Oh, highly praise the Lord. Praise is what we do. And God said, but there's something in you that I don't like what's in you. Come on. He that descended is the same also that ascended up full above all heaven. I'm going to show you. Later on, I'm going to show you. He said he that ascended went down there and, you know, was the same. And I'm really going to show you. He's going to say, I went down there. You went down there with me too. So you know how it feels to go down. You know how it feels when, when nobody would want to talk to you. You know how it feels not to put something in your mouth. You know how it feels you had to walk. You know how, you know how it feels. And then, they, then we, you know, remember he, he the, the disciple said, he said, he said, when I was hungry, you fed me now. Yeah. They said, Lord, when were you hungry? 
He right. said, it's when you didn't take care of the ones that went beneath you. Yeah. The ones that you rolled your, yeah. your nose up to. All right. The ones that you see, know they, they may not be fit like you, and then you don't want to sit on the same road with them. Yes, sir. The ones that get on their private phone and talk about, that's when you disrespect the women. I'm trying to get this atmosphere because guess what? Some of us got children, you know, who, who waiting for mommy to act, you know, get scrapes. Some of us, you know, got doors that God want to open up. But this is just this, this too much. It's just too much in me. Mm -hmm. And I got the nerve to my Lord, open up this door. He said, yeah, I'm going to open up that door right now for you to take that same attitude that you got out there in the head. I'm trying to clean that attitude out. That's what I'm trying to prepare you for this. Amen. Mm -hmm. Some of us can, he said, some, that's why they couldn't go in the promised land because they weren't prepared for it. Yeah. Your promised land is right in front of you in your dreams and your vision, but you ain't prepared to go through it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All because you claim to be a Christian does not mean you ain't. I can have a Christian look, but I got to have a Christian way. I got to start denying myself. That makes me a Christian. When I can deny myself, forget about how you look at me. I got to see how God look at me. See? Come on, man. Now send up for all heaven. They may feel all things. See, hey, Mike, he said, he said, he said, if I can get back home, I can fulfill all things. But he said, I can't even go home because my children ain't acting right. Well, man, my bad, my bad, my bad. Let me go on. Hey, bro, he said he cannot go home until y'all get right. I got a mortgage due. I got children that that need me. Yeah. And I've got the nerve to be talking to them. I need to go close my door, close my closet, and I need to sit up in the corner and say, Lord, hear me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to go. For God, for God, this. But God deals with, you know, we had a funeral. My bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, well, y'all quiet, man. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to, trying to show you how to get this atmosphere for God can just, you know. He said, he said, I already went up and down, and now I got to get back because guess what? If I stay here too long, then I got to, you know, breastfeed you too much. How do you look being 45? Come on. Cheers up. Remember, he said, I can't, you know, you, you should be through with this milk now. I should be giving you some solid food. But we still want that milk. Right. There's something about that milk. One percent, two percent, don't make us give me that, give me that milk. Because well. I ain't ready to fight. When a person ain't ready to fight, he wants you to bust his food up too. The devil know he's busy. No, that's just you ain't ready to fight. It's just like it's just like you, you put your keys in your house and another family in and you let them all. And you tell your cousin they can come over here. I don't know them. What you gonna do? Guess I get on the show. <laughs> That's how the enemy do, y'all. That's what you're trying to get. He telling you it's mine. And then when he, you know, and when y'all don't want to fight, he said, I guess you better get in the trunk. <laughs> Camera drive your own car. My God. Come on, man. And he gave me. some apostle. Oh no, that's it. That's it. Because I don't want y'all to talk about, we won't talk about the four, five, four minutes. He said, how, how would I know for the five, four minutes and what I can't fight? No. And I'm just like some, you know, I'm like. Just like some of the young people, I, I don't keep it real. So I got to deny myself. Yeah. Boy, y'all got it hot up in here. Mm. All right. 
point number one. I got to constantly be, I got to constantly be in preparation. Ooh, constantly got to be in preparation. Because I don't know who the enemy going to bring in the next three minutes. Right. Don't you know old sister, old sister Jones is the sweetest lady on, on your block? If she don't know that the enemy finna use her right quick, she will cause headache and chaos and cause you to go. I can't believe she did that to me. When, when you fight, you, 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 sometimes you can't you know, keep your guard down. That's why if you're in the boxing ring, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a bell ring, and, you know, the referee come right quick because those boxers still want to get it on. Tell me something, I got to just keep on boxing with the enemy. Even though the bell rung, I already knocked it up. I got to keep on going getting prepared for the next one. Because I know somebody's coming a lot stronger and a lot faster than him. Because if I beat him with just that one punch, I know he's going to send somebody else. You know, all because you defeated one of them. You defeated the time clock situation because you know he has somebody always watching the time. Oh, he two minutes late. I want to see how much she gonna put. You know what I mean? She ain't coming no eight o'clock. Then she came eight on one. I may defeat that one. Now I gotta sit the ones that come around my desk worrying about what I'm doing. Oh my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Because you see, y'all don't know. Go to Matthew. Chapter 16, in verse 19. And I will give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He's saying, now I'm going to give you some keys, some keys, some special keys, some special keys. The only priest that got a set of these keys is going to be you. Yeah. Because, you know, these keys he's really talking about. Come on, Elder Walker. And whatsoever that shall bind on earth shall be bind in heaven. In other words, he said, these keys I'm going to give you, they're going to be the keys of the law. They're going to be the keys of, princip you know, of principles. They're going to be the keys of a system, and they're going to be the keys of concept. And said, he said, these four keys, you're going to need to fight this battle when I'm going to get ready to put you in. Because it's just very strange. The Bible said, after Jesus got baptized, yeah. his daddy sent him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. And I submit to you, he tempted him in all his mind in areas that we be tempted every day of our lives. He offered him an opportunity, the city. He offered him, you know, wealth. He offered him a better home. He, he offered him so many things. Sometimes, sometimes I met, all because I started off in the shotgun doesn't mean I'm going to stay there. Yeah. Right. Amen. And that's what we prepared for, all because I'm here, you know, guess I just settled down right here and just stay right here for a long time. How you doing, my new neighbor? You know, I really, I really shouldn't be on this street. But I settled for, now my fight is not with the street. The fight is in my mind. Could yeah, yeah. huh? I settled it that I may have to stay here. And I had a dream and a vision to go. Go to John. Chapter 1. In verse 48. John 1 and 48. Nathan said unto him, When knows thy me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. He said, he said no matter what, he said, I, he said, Have you ever noticed that Jesus picked his own company? And one of his companies that he picked was a faith to save him. But I submit to you, Judas really wasn't that bad. He just got used. So if you ain't got a click and you got somebody that's trying to use you, be careful <laughs> that you may be the Judas. Because what's your motive? 
Come on, man. I'm going to read that again. Nathan answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Mm -hmm. Thou art the king, the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said to thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believe it thou, thou shall see greater things He said, he said only because thee. I put you in that trailer, if you believe you're going to stay in that trailer, that's where you're going to be. But believe that this trailer was only just a temporary spot for you. So let me know, no matter where I'm at, if it ain't part of my dream, it ain't part of my vision, and I ain't got no fight, I ain't got no struggle against it, I'm only there temporarily. You know, I'm going to tell you my life story. You know, sometimes you can be dating this girl and you got all high hopes for a date. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Hallelujah. I mean, you got it all built up, boy. You, especially in high school, you walk the hall. You know. <laughs> yeah. Then three months later, you know how we used to do, do you like me? And then, you know what I mean? Then she never circles and you go back to it. Do you still like me? And she said, no. <laughs> so let me know that was only a temporary relationship. <laughs> but you hurt. You cry. Go home and tell your mama. Because, you know, mama's love, you know what I mean? Mama don't want to see their children go through that. And daddy said, oh, boy, you'll get over it. you find finally another. Look at me. <laughs> then your mom. <laughs> I want you to write down something. Can I use this for a second? You looking good at me. Can I use this for a quick question? <laughs> All right, here we go. Write it down. We're going we're to go to Habakkuk chapter 2. And we're going to go to verse 1 through 3. And as you go in there, I want you to, I want you, I want you to picture this. Sight is a function of the eyes. While vision is a function of the heart. Just watch it. You ready? You got a slide? You gotta play basketball? Not really? You gotta shoot? going to show you an illustration of sight and a heart with faith. Come on. I want you to shoot a free throw. Yeah, that's how you shoot. Did the ball go in? Now I want you to shoot, now I want you to shoot a layup. I'm going to show you something. Her eyes and her heart were fixed on what she was trying to make. Because why? Because when I asked her to shoot, she didn't shoot way over there. She didn't shoot way over there. When I asked her to make a layup, all because the jump shot may have seemed too far for her, she took, she took just how far her faith would take her to and made the layup. And that's how sometimes we got to start in order for us to see what we're trying to see, what's in the inside of our us. You feel me? All because Brother Jones shooting way out there, he, I make him, you know, I got to go where it's easy. Yeah. And stay there until what becomes easy becomes easy for me to see and believe in my heart. Then I step back, and now I can start asking God for things that was once too easy for me. Then it comes automatic to 
me. I could be not getting and setting the atmosphere for God because I'm trying to be like somebody else shooting too far and my faith ain't that far be because between the goal and the distance is always going to be some adversary and people pulling on me trying to tell me I can't do it. Hallelujah. Think about it, how many times people say you can't do it. Yeah. And we stop. I know. All right, come on. Two, one and three. And I will stand up on my watch and set me up on the, the tower and my watch to see what he will say unto me mm -hmm. and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. She said, God, she, she, she. God said it. I can care less about what Brother Jones, Sister Jones say. The preacher on the West Side, the preacher on LA TV said, God told me to write it. I'm just like this. I'd rather for you, sometimes I'd rather for you to write it than talk to me. Because mm -hmm. for me to go back and look at that. Oh, two step. Can I tell you, take two step when you guys are stupid that you want to be? Maybe I am just stupid. Now, because I'd already planted it in my mind. Now I'm stuck there being. Come on. Write the vision. See, write it. And make it plain up on table. See, I got to make it plain. Because I'm going to share something with you. This vision that God is asking you to write, it ain't for you, sugar. It's for your children. Because a wise man leaves his inheritance. For his children, children. In other words, my children are going to take my vision and my dream, and I got to make sure I throw it to the right one, because if I throw it to the one that really don't care nothing about how they feel about people, and where, they, and where I'm trying to take them, they are taking it and chew it and throw it somewhere else. Yeah. That's why he said, do, do not cast your pearls before swine. <laughs> Lamentation. Lamentation 3 and 5. 3 and 51, I'm sorry. 351? Yeah. My eyes affected my heart. See, he, see what I mean? My eyes have affected my dreams, so that's why I couldn't finish. Because have you ever started something and then you start looking at it and the project looks too big and you say, just forget it. Yeah. This ain't for me. Maybe God didn't call me on this one. Maybe I just didn't hear God. And then, and then you get on the hell of phone with the wrong person and they say, baby, maybe God just ain't you. You do it next year. I, I, I say it like this. If you that, if you that scared of me, this must be what God wants me to be. Then keep on pushing it. I'm sure y'all been rejected before, and all it did is make you stand up and, and just push harder. Mm -hmm. All right, here goes something else. When God looked at you, he sees something that everybody else ignores. Yeah. Why do you think you, that same thing, what you wanted to do, you ignored it, somebody else came and did it. Now you say, I don't. The same way. Yeah. I once, you know, um, saw an old reality show. And, you know, the man said, invent something for, um, I think it was like $25. And he said, you can't invent something that was in the past. But, the, you know, the man, you know, he didn't, he didn't understand. So the man went and got him a circle and, you know, made a hula hoop. So the man said, you're about 20 years short, brother. Hula hoop's been out for a long time. But you missed the concept. When God gives you something, he will never give this idea to somebody else that he, that he knows that's inside you that only you can fulfill. Because the Bible says, 
it's this treasure in this earthen vessel. And if you don't go down there and go get it, somebody else can steal it. Now you working somewhere where you got to sweat and be frustrated all because you was too lazy to go down in your own cell and pull out what was a gift that God gave to you for you to set up this atmosphere because he said, I'm trying to get the same concept in heaven just like it is on earth. But if you don't recognize who you are and whose you are, you will always be doing something against who you are. Go to 1 Samuel 18, 5 through 11. Eighteen five through 11. And David went out wherever Saul sent him. And then went out whatever the boss man sent him. Sometimes, sometimes people will put you in situations that, guess what, that's, that's not only too hard for you, but can also frustrate you. Come on. And behave himself wisely. See, I'm, I gotta, still got to behave myself wisely because he who watches over Israel may either sleep or slumber. That lets me know wherever I go, I'm representing God. Mm-hmm. Come on. And Saul so sent him over the men a wall. Ooh, we send them to places that guess what? Ooh, he's too scary. Anytime a person's going out, going somewhere where he got to fight, he ain't prepared to fight. He get a pack of suitcase, do like the man did in color purple. As soon as when Oprah went to go hit the lady, he said, "Uh oh, time to go pack his suitcase and left her out out the juke joint." That's how we do. Come on, this can't be God. Come on. And he was a serpent in the sight of all the people. Mm-hmm. And also in the sight of Saul's servant. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. Mm -hmm. That the woman came out of all the city of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with timbre and jaw and with instruments of music. Mm -hmm. And the woman answered and another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousand and David his ten thousand. So now that lets me know that I know I'm called of God. He put me at this job. Now everybody hates me, but I submit to you, you wasn't too, at that job to be loved. You was at that job to be persecuted. Right. Because when you are persecuted, it's easy for elevation. Because <laughs> he said, blessed are the ones who are being persecuted. So it lets me know I got to go into that job. When I get out the door, I say, let's fight. Why? Come on, I'm going to show you the reason why it was easy for, for David to take over with what God sent him. Go to 16, verse 16. Chap, same, same book, but um, chapter 16. Chapter 16, I guess. Same book, chapter 16. I want you to go to verse 7, then jump down to verse 8 and 13. Watch, I'm going to show you something. Then I'm going to go. But the Lord said unto Samuel, uh-huh. Then the Lord said unto Pastor Robert, Elder Walker, Elder Crawford, or anybody who you listen to, come on. Look not on his countenance. Look not on how the people are looking at you. Some of them, man, I don't know, they, I don't know what he's talking about. Man, you know, he, he trying to boost up something that I don't want to see. Come on. On the height of his stature. Or how, you know, the circumstances that make him want to put his head down. Because I have refused him. Because I have refused. So now I know why I can't be a usher. Now I know why I can't be a parking lot attendant. Now I know I can't be driving a van. And I can't be on Willie Baker bake sale. All right. Come on. <laughs> That's seven? That's just seven. Because I have refused him, but the Lord see not as man see. See, I saw somebody else. But the person that I saw, the person that kept on jumping in his way, I got to move him out the way. So now I see why I got all hell at, at work, because God is trying to move him out my way. Because uh-huh. it's always going to be a struggle for position. Because the Bible said inside this woman was, was two nations. Yeah. yeah. 
So I'm always fighting for a position just to try to get in my rightful place at the table. Come on. For man look up, for man, for the Lord see not as man see, for man looking on the outward appearance, mm -hmm. but the Lord looking on the heart. What number you at now? Seven. Go to eight. And just called, what's the man's name? A been there. Mm -hmm. And made him, made him pass for salmon. Mm -hmm. And he said, neither has the Lord chose this. In other words, everybody that tries to come before you to try to get this promotion, God keep on saying, get them out the way. That's the wrong person. Come on. And, and then just made Shemal to pass by. And he said, neither had the Lord chose this. See? Everybody who's trying to move you out the way, talk about you behind your back, always trying to tell everybody about you, telling your business, not telling their business. God, so I'm trying to move them out my way, too. Come on. Again, Jesus made seven. Again? Oh, his son. Oh, I've, been here eight, I've been here eight years, Lord, again? I missed the promotion again? Come on. And, and, and Simon said to Jesus, the Lord have not chosen thee. And Simon said unto Jesus, are here all thy children. Is this all you got them who work up in here? Is and, this all you got? And he said, there remain yet the Eunice. I got one that takes all the criticism. I got one that just keep their mouth closed. I got one that's never, that's always working extra. I got one that, that doesn't even disrespect me. I got one of them that wants to be part of my team. Come on. And behold, he keeping the sheep. He's keeping the things what they thought was, wasn't no good. They getting the, the low petty job. They, they just taking all situations. They even clean up the elephant stuff. But the ones that you keep on rejecting are the ones that show high class. And Samuel said unto Jesse, mm -hmm. send and fetch him. Oh, send and go fetch him. I don't care if they're in a copy machine making a thousand copies. Go get them. But we will not sit down. Oh, look at that. He was saying your haters will not be able to sit down until you get in your right seat in your right position to understand what this whole company was all about. <coughs> come on. We will not sit down until he come here to See, I can't even sit down until I get into the right place. Y'all thought, y'all thought, all oh, because daddy didn't come home, you couldn't eat. But now, because he was in authority, he was away, we were away from him all the time. And now I got to sit down. Uh -huh. Because if you ever look at the, the scripture say that was saw, oh no, God. When Stephen was being stoned, the only time the Bible recorded Jesus standing up was when he saw one of his children taking the same thing he went through. The rest of us, he said, is still there. Mm -hmm. Come on. And he sent and brought him in. Oh, uh -huh. Now he was ready. Have you ever, have you ever had to go past your haters? Because if you ever read, it was seven of them, and he made it eight. Eight. Does that eight mean something real good? A new, new beginning. beginning. So new beginning had to walk through just to let all the rest of y'all know that guess what? I'm here now. Y'all yeah. don't sit down until I sit down. Y'all don't get no promotion until I get my promotion. Come yeah. on. <laughs> and he was rooted in the whip in a beautiful council uh -huh. and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, or not him, for this Whoa! is he. Now I understand. <laughs> Why I got to go through them, what I'm going through? Because I was anointed to go through the situation and the circumstances and, and you know, the people who I came in contact with. Because I was anointed because God anointed me just for them. Because <coughs> anybody else you ain't called to, they're going to leave you anyway. Because they're waiting for you to get into in your right position. Because when you sit, we can sit. Remember I told you? Right division, make it fall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on, what? And Simon took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Oh, he anointed. I was anointed in the midst of my haters. I was anointed. Sometimes your anointing can also affect the people in your, in your, my bad. 
they think they know everything. I do, baby. I'm a knowing it. <laughs> if I don't know everything, why you keep on calling me? All right. <laughs> you know I don't talk like sister so-and-so and day-day -so Ray Ray and them. You keep on calling me, asking me to pray behind closed doors. All right. When we have our family reunion, you don't follow them. You follow me. <laughs> Do you know anybody who's about to help me out? Remember the time you called me and you needed a favor? You asked me, do I know anybody got favor on them? Didn't you use them? <laughs> oh, my bad. Let me go back up here. Come on. And anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord came on David from now that day. Now I know why I'm going to be celebrated in the places where I'm supposed to be hurt because I'm anointed to go into places where it's supposed to affect me. Not to hurt me, but to pull out the God in me. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for what we're sharing tonight. Father God, what we're sharing this morning. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that your word did fall on good ground. So, God, I thank you, Father. You are preparing us for an atmosphere, Lord, not, not for ourselves, but for you. So, God, we thank you right now for the words that went forth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.